So this morning we got some stampable overlay samples we're making for a customer. We're going to use the Butterfield stampable quarter to three eighths inch stampable overlay for this. We got just some pieces of hardy board here we're, we're going over. Some of them we've done already, but we're going to go right over it. We're going to stamp it. We're going to do a stone texture. We're going to do a, a wood plank, 16 inch barn board wood plank on one. And then we're going to use our Ashler slate roller on another one and give them three different things to look at here. So again, we're going to prime it first. We've got the primer in there. The Butterfield primer is mixed 50-50 with water. So we'll just prime these first. This is what, this is what you'd do on a regular concrete floor. Let that dry. And then we can go ahead and mix up the overlay and put the overlay down. All right, so we're getting ready to mix the product. Each bag takes about four quarts of water. So we're measuring out two and two. We'll get the water. You always put the water in first, and you add the dry powder to the water so it doesn't get clumpy. We also got Colomix's new mixer here, the X06. Uh, they sent us this to use to try, so we're trying it out, showing you guys how this works in the video. We got our we got our sample boards all primed. It's been on there for a little while and drying. So that's all ready to go. One of these bags, we're gonna use one bag per board. Put it on about a quarter to three eighths. And that's what we usually do for stampable overlays. We'll mix this for about three minutes. It's going to be not, not quite as runny as pancake batter, kind of like in between pancake batter and peanut butter, somewhere in that consistency. Once we get it to where we want it, we'll dump it on, just like you would on a floor, you dump it on. Then we're going to use a gauge rake. We've got a gauge rake set up up there at a quarter inch, and that's going to get us to the level we need it at. And then we use a magic trowel just to smooth out any lines. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth because you're stamping a texture on it. So we'll be stamping. You can see the texture we're putting on it. The wood plank here, the stone texture here, and then the Ashler slate stamp there. So all you need to do is just get the lines out of it, and it's okay if it's a little bit rough on the surface. You can see how that stuff mixes up nice after about a minute. Now we mix this for three minutes. Now when you're done mixing, you just dump it out on your board. Now I didn't get a good shot of the gauge raking, but this is basically how you do it. You just dump it out move it around with your gauge rate, get it to the height you need it at. And don't worry about the lines, you're gonna smooth those out afterwards. The gauge rake is just for getting it, getting it leveled out. All right, mixing up the second bag. So the first bag did this piece here, quarter inch thick, three by five, plus another three by three section right there at a quarter inch thick. That's about the texture you need it at right there, I mean, the, the waviness, the, the roughness you see, that's all going to go away when you stamp it. The stamp is going to take put the impression in there. You don't need to get that perfectly smooth. So you actually want it a little bit textured like this. You just don't want the lines, you know, you don't want the lines from the gauge rake in there. Um, but you don't need to get it perfectly smooth. That's going to come out just fine. You won't see that stuff when we're all done. So the magic trial gets it pretty smooth. 
that's all you need right there. And then, uh, like I said, the stamp, the stamp's going to take care of the rest. You can see how the gauge rake leaves it, leaves it pretty rough. <laughs> that's perfectly fine. You just need to get it to the right thickness, and then you can smooth it out. They, they even have a tool called a smoother you could use on a big floor. But on something small, this will work just fine. So the way you tell this is ready is, you know, when you can when you can press down on it, and it doesn't really stick to your fingers. That means it's about ready to stamp. It's going to feel a little bit wet, but you can't wait too long. It's only a quarter of an inch thick, or you won't get the impression in it. So this one here is just about ready to go. It's only been, you know, about 10 minutes or so. It's pretty hot and humid out today. Hot and humid weather will make it set up faster. So we're going to spray the liquid release on this one with the charcoal color in it. And then we're going to use the barn board stamp and see how that goes right there. So what I'm doing here is I've got my, my liquid release. This is what you put on before you stamp. So you, you clear liquid release, put it in a sprayer, and then we're going to spray that on before we put the stamp down so the stamps don't stick to the, the overlay. And what I'm doing is I'm just mixing a little bit of the, the antiquing release powder in the release. So it'll give us a little bit of a colored, a little bit of an antiquing effect when we go to stamp. So I'm just putting a little bit in there just to, just to give us a little bit of color down in there. Otherwise, it would just go on clear. And then when we get ready to stamp, we'll spray that on. So here's the stamps. First thing we want to do is use the release, the liquid release, and spray the stamp. And then what we're going to do is spray the surface of the overlay to make sure everything's got good coverage on it. And you only want to spray it, you know, a couple minutes before you get ready to do it because this stuff evaporates pretty quick. So there's that. And then... I can see some of the charcoal color in there already. It looks pretty good. So there's that. We'll get a good coating on that. Make sure nothing sticks to it. See that charcoal there coming up now. That looks good. All right, so that's ready to stamp right now. We'll grab one of the stamps, lay it down, and then I'll spray the next stamp and then lay that right next to it. On a big job, you'd have a whole set of these stamps. set that right down and then we're going to set the other one next to it we'll probably offset it a little bit if you can reach like Darren's doing if you can reach from the outside and it's still dry, uh, wet enough you can tamp it otherwise you'd be walking on these and get, give you next one a good soaking we don't want nothing to stick and then we'll set that one right on So we're offsetting our seams. Now normally on a big job we'd have a whole pile of these stamps. We'd just cover the, com the whole thing in stamps. This one, we just got two here, so we're going to pick one up and set it over just to complete the, the board. Good thing with liquid is when you go to pick the stamp up, you can take a peek under it make sure you got good texture. If not, you put it back down, you tamp it a little bit more. That's the difference with that and powder release. Powder release, you just don't know sometimes. If it's sticking, we just spray on a little bit more. It doesn't seem to really be sticking too bad. Um, it looks pretty good. It's got good texture there. Maybe we've got to press down a little more in a couple areas.
I'm gonna hit that with a little bit more release right here. This one's got really nice texture to it. Looks like old barn board wood plank. So on a big floor, if you're going up against a wall or, you know, up against a building or something, we have what's called a flexible mat. It's a lot more flexible than those, and they bend really, really easy. That's probably what you'd use going up against a wall. All right, we just got to do this one little edge, then this piece is going to be done for now. See the wood grain texture in there. It's got really good wood grain texture. So the release, putting the putting the black charcoal release inside, mixing it with a clear release gives us that antiquish effect. Now that's going to dry like that, and then we'll we'll wash that off. We'll, we'll clean it off. And with some water and then we can seal that like that and that gives your your barn boards a little bit more of a realistic effect all right so this one we just used a clear release stamp had a little bit of the residue left on it but and then we're going to teak wash what we call teak wash this one with an antiquing release uh, an antiquing wash afterwards so we got our two samples of the barn board done we're going to use the roller over there on that one and then we're going to use the rock texture here on these two we'll use one with the pigmented re release in it and then one with the clear release yep so that's the ashler slate roller that looks pretty good. <laughs> Gives it pretty good texture. There's the rock texture. There's the wood plank, barn board. So those, there's a few little lines there that didn't show up. You can just touch them up by hand with the hand tool joint, which I'll get here in a second and touch those up. So we got a couple tools we use for touching up these these joints like this because that always happens with ashler slate so you got to have a touch up well I'll try the i'll try the roller 
on this one here just to fix those. So all we do is just put it in there and we roll that joint in just like that. It's perfect. Finish that joint off and then we just touch up anything we need to touch up. Not looking for perfection here, we're looking just for realistic. Some of these, I mean, you could touch up the next day too. But whatever you can get now, just save you a little bit of work later on. That looks pretty good to me. On a big pad or a big floor, I mean, you wouldn't be able to reach all these. So you'd have to be touching them up the next day with, you know, you'd use a four inch grinder with maybe a diamond wheel or something, but that looks pretty good right there. You could use this on those joints too if you needed to. Any of those joints, you know, if you can, as long as you got the right width wheel, would work on good on all those. All right, so we got our samples washed, cleaned. We got the teak wash on these here, these two. Now we're gonna add the sealer. Got them all cleaned and dried off. So we're just gonna spray some clear sealer on for now. That should that should pop those colors a little bit. See what that looks like. So after you get the sealer on, you're pretty much done. Two coats of that and you're done. Now that's the basics of doing a stampable concrete overlay. You know, you can resurface just about any type of concrete with something like this. If you want to learn more about this, then definitely join the Concrete Underground. The link is down in the description below. Um, I'm in there to help you learn. If you've got questions, I can help answer them. And that's what that's for. But this is basically what we do to resurface a lot of concrete and make it look a lot better. So I hope this helps you guys learn a little bit more about stampable overlays. And thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. It really pops those colors good. This was walnut. So this was a gray base with a walnut teak wash. Stone texture with a walnut teak wash. And this was the roller Ashler slate stamp with we put we mixed the color in with the liquid release when we stamped it.